This is a continuation for the lesson for handout 5A. And so looking at the first problem here, we have two cars leave town at the same time going this time in the same direction. The last type of problem that was similar to this, they were going in opposite directions. But here they're going in the same direction, on the same road. One travels at 20 miles an hour, the other at 30. How long will it take them to be 72 miles apart? So what we're going to end up doing is if we take a look at a picture here, so here's the town, and here's one car, and it travels a certain distance, and maybe this is the slower car. And then here's the faster car, and it goes, but it goes a little bit longer. And so the difference between these two distances that they've traveled here, this distance here, the part that the s slower car did not travel was 72 miles. So what we could do is we don't know the distance both of them travel, but we do know the faster car traveled 72 miles more. Well, more means typically to add. So if I call the slower car's distance d, the faster car's distance would be that 72 plus d. And we're going to use that in our two equations that we set up. So our formula for distance for this is distance equals rate times by time. And we have the two cars. We've got the slow one and we've got the fast car. And so when we go ahead and write in their formulas, we're going to use d again for the slow car. The distance, we don't know, is an unknown. We're, we're going to use that d to represent the distance that the slow car went. Its rate was 20 miles an hour. Its time, well, we don't know that either, but we do know that they left at the same time, so we can use the same variable. So when I write the other one, the other faster car went 72 miles more then the slower car wins. We write that expression as 72 plus d. Its rate was 30 miles an hour. And since they left at the same time, we're using the same variable, t. So now what we can do is substitute. We can take this expression, 20t, put this in place of d in the equation below, because that's what it equals. And then we can go ahead and rewrite our equation. 72 plus 20t <coughs> equals 30t. And so all we have to do is do some subtraction. So you subtract the 20t from both sides to isolate the unknown. And we can go ahead and divide after that. So we'll go ahead and rewrite this as 72 equals 10t. So when you do that division, dividing by 10 on both sides, we end up with a decimal. And that's OK. Just leave the answer that way. 7 and 2 tenths is the time it takes those two cars to be. 72 miles apart. So 72, 7 and 2 tenths hours would be our answer. <clears throat> and the next one is Ted does a job in 3 hours. Al does the same job in 5 hours. How long does it take them to do the job if they are working together? And then how long would it take them if their job were triple the size when working together? Well, our, this is a rate problem also, very similar to distance equals rate times time. But it goes this way, job equals rate times by time. Well, a job is a completed job. So again, this J stands for job, and this means a completion. And so completion, typically if we think of a percentage for completion, a number, we would use 100%. That would be a job being completed. Well, if I write 100% as a decimal, that would just be 1, because I moved the decimal two spaces over. So 1 represents the job being done. Well, it takes Ted three hours to do the job. So if I put 3 in place of t, let's find his rate. Well, to find the rate, all I have to do is divide by 3. So notice that every time a job completion is 1. That's a constant, same, something that's always there. The time always changes, depending on how fast the person does the job. But notice what? the rate is. The rate is just the reciprocal of the time. So the rate at which Ted does the job is one-third. One part out of three parts every hour. After two hours, he's done two parts out of three parts. After three hours, three parts out of three parts, which equals one, which is a job completion. So we're going to use that concept here when figuring out how long it takes them to do it together. Together means that we are going to add their rates together. Add rates. And so let's go ahead and rewrite our equation here. Job equals rate times by time. And we can go ahead and fill this in. So 1 equals the rates at which they do it together would be 1 third, that's Ted's rate, 
plus Al's rate is one-fifth. He does one-fifth of the job each hour. After five hours, he's done, which is five-fifths, which equals one. We don't know the time. That's what we're tr trying to solve for. And so what we need to do is come up with a common denominator. Let's multiply the three by five and the five by three. And that way, we have the same denominator, five-fifteenths plus three-fifteenths. Those numbers get added together. Times by time, all equals one. So one equals eight-fifteenths times by the time. So to solve for the time, all you're going to do is take the reciprocal, multiply by that reciprocal, and it cancels out the rate of 8 fifteenths. So we do the same thing on the other side, but notice that 1 is always the job completion. So 1 times 15 eighths just makes 15 eighths. And that is the time at which it takes them to do the job together. Change that to a decimal or to a mixed number might be just as easy. So it go 1 and 7 eighths hours. And that would be the time at which they do the job together. Well, now we want to triple the size. Triple means three times. And so now, instead of a job equaling one, because typically I said that this is always the constant, always one. Well, now we're tripling that job. So the job is tripled. So that means that we are going to end up multiplying it by three. So job equals one times by three equals three. So now we're going to do three equals this <coughs> this 15 eighths, which we know is the rate at which they do the job together, and then times by t. Well, the time, well, we can go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal again. And actually, I messed up there. That needs to be the rate, not the time. So let's go ahead and fix that. So the rate at which they do the job together, we said was 8 fifteenths. And so that's what we're going to multiply by, is that 15 eighths on both sides. So basically, if you're tripling the size of the job, notice that we're just going to multiply the time it takes them to do one job by that amount. So three times the time it takes them to do that job. So that makes 45 eighths, which would reduce down to 8 goes into 45 five times with five left over. So five and five eighths hours it's going to take them to do a job that's triple the size. Well, here's another problem very similar to that. It's a tank that fills uh, in 9 hours and drains in 12 hours. Well, how long will it take them if they're kind of working against each other? Because it's filling and draining. And so this is against. So this, instead of adding, we're going to subtract. Subtract the rates because draining is like taking away. Adding, filling is like adding. So notice here. The job equals the rate times by time. Job is 1, 100% completion. The tank being filled is 1 equals the rates. So 1 ninth is the rate at which it fills, but that's positive. Fills means plus, but drains means minus. So we're going to minus the 1 twelfth. So they're working against each other. And then times by the time. And so we still need to come up with that common denominator. This time they have a common factor. So they have 3 is the common factor. So I don't need to multiply by that extra 3. But this 9 needs the 4 that 12 has. And 12 is missing that extra 3 that 9 has. And so we go ahead and multiply across. This is what we've got. 1 equals 4 36 minus 3 36. See, now the denominators are the same. And so when I go ahead and subtract, I end up with 1 36. They get 1 out of 36 parts done each hour. Well, multiplying by the reciprocal will give me how much time it takes them to do the job together, or, well, against each other. And so multiplying by the reciprocal cancels out that, that coefficient of t. So you see how those 36 cancel there. So t ends up equaling 36. So it's going to take 36 hours for that tank to fill if it's draining at the same time. Well, those are the types of problems you'll see on handout 5a.